We acknowledge with gratitude the ancestral lands upon which our main campus is situated. These lands are the ancestral territories of the Haudenosaunee Confederacy, Mississaugas of the First Credit First Nation, Anishtabak, and the Wendake. The shared responsibility of this land is honored in the Dish with One Spoon Treaty. And as settlers, we strive to care for the land, the waters, and all creatures in the spirit of peace. We are responsible for respecting and supporting the enduring presence of all First Nations, Métis, and Inuit peoples. Welcome and thank you for joining us this evening for part one of a two-part series focusing on school life programming at Greenwood. I'm just watching the live stream and noticing we have a number of families still joining us. So we're just gonna get started with a, a little introduction um, as people come on in and then we'll get started right away on the presentation. So our hope is that this two-part series on school life programming will complement the session last week, which was on academics and the focus of customized learning at Greenwood. For part one, we'll narrow our focus on Greenwood's outdoor education, service learning, and leadership programs. Next week, in part two of our series, we'll showcase the arts, athletics, and our student success center, highlighted by specialist staff members from each stream. This presentation will roughly go for around 30 minutes. After the presentation, you're welcome to join the Q&A session through the link at the bottom of your live stream. Along with our presenters, a few Greenwood students and parents will also join us in the Q&A. Last year's school life programs were limited or non-existent. So you can imagine how excited we are to be welcoming back these programs this year. We are layering on things in a safe and careful and thoughtful manner, and we are looking forward to getting the full programming back in the months ahead. So I am going to turn the night over to our Director of Outdoor Education, Julie Garvin, to get us started. Good evening, everyone. Uh, thank you so much for joining us. My name is Julie Gerben, and I am the Director of Outdoor Education. Uh, this is actually my first year at Greenwood, but I have been in the independent school system for 17 years, uh, and I was the Coordinator of Outdoor Education at my last school for over 10 years. Um, I love spending time in the outdoors. I love hiking. I love canoeing, especially with my little buddy there. Um, I spent my summers growing up at uh, summer camp in Algonquin Park and was a director of an all the girls camp. So I love outdoor education and I'm very excited to be a part of the Greenwood community. Um, with that, uh, I wanted to just talk a little bit about, you know, the opportunities we see with outdoor education. Outdoor education has been a pillar program at Greenwood since the very beginning. Uh, it's such a uh, important part of what we think uh, students can grow and learn from, uh, whether or not that's through character development, you know, in achieving their own personal growth, looking for opportunities to lead, embracing challenge, um, you know, working through uh, obstacles and, and persevering on the other side. Uh, the importance of having shared experience with students, so going away together, uh, developing teamwork and learning to work with one another, those cooperation skills, uh, so important for development. And then finally, just the skills that they learn when they're on these trips and the fun that's had with being outside and enjoying each other's companies. Uh, for our program at Greenwood, uh, obviously with COVID restrictions, we've been a little bit limited in the last uh, little bit, but I do want to take you through uh, what would be our sort of typical programs. So generally students at Greenwood go away in the fall and in the winter. And there's a continuum in terms of how the program builds at each grade level. Um, this is uh, sort of our program overview pre-COVID. Um, I'm happy to report that we've been able to bring back some fall day trips very safely this year and overnights. And we have plans for multi-day trips this winter as well as some of our typical fall trips this June. And we're hoping to get back to sort of full programming for uh, next year. Looking at the fall program uh, in terms of how we have done things, we look at skill development sort of age and stage. So it builds 
every year that students come to Greenwood. Um, we look for opportunities for personalization within our trips. So we look for, uh, in our grade nine canoe trip, the opportunity for students to you know, sign up for a specific trip. So whether or not that's a Voyager, uh, sort of a more challenging trip or looking at developing more photography skills uh, or doing more arts in, a, in the wild. Every uh, grade gets an experience that has a specific theme. Uh, and then also as they uh, go up in grade, uh, goes out for a little bit longer, a little bit more of a challenge. Uh, one of our base programs is our residential camp programs. And I actually have a video. This video was taken from uh, 2019 at Tamaqua. Um, it just goes to show you a little bit about our residential programs and what students take away both the grade eights that are on uh, that this trip was planned for, as well as some of our student leaders who came up to act as camp counselors. Um, and so I think it's a, about three minutes and we'll just play this now so that you can get a sense of our residential school uh, outdoor ed programs. <laughs> Tamakwa, I'm looking forward to doing all the things that I wouldn't be able to do at home. So like fire building and lifting a canoe over our heads or zip lining or anything like that. I find it so awesome that we literally just like, everyone's at school right now and we just were starting our year off by going to Tamakwa. And today I did polar bear. It was freezing, but it was really fun. Yeah. And I'm really excited for the one day trip. <laughs> I enjoyed most about Tamaku was uh, spending time with these great aides, you know, getting to know them and uh, having a, like, forming a relationship that we'll have throughout my grade 12 year. Yeah, what I enjoyed most about Tamaku this year was definitely going on the day trips and kind of sharing my knowledge with a lot of the great aides and encouraging them. And I felt like uh, I connected really well with a lot of the great aides. And I feel like for kind of the younger kids, it'll help them a lot, you know, be more confident at school and it'll make them just feel more comfortable. Two things I learned from Tamakwa were how to build a fire in the rain and we also got to go on a day trip to Tom Thompson's grave and that was pretty cool. because I've really been able to connect with a lot of kids I wouldn't have otherwise and I've been able to spend a lot more time with friends that you know I don't get to see as much at school so it's been really cool to spend more time with people and connect with people on a better level. What I liked best about Tamakwa was probably all the campfires because we got to see people's talents and skits which were really funny plus it was just really fun.
gave you a little slice of what an outdoor ed trip at Greenwood is like. Uh, we really find for the grades sevens, eights, and nines, we take them on a residential camp experience in the fall. And it's a great way to build community for the students to get to know each other before they're really you know, involved in all of their classes. And uh, they can really learn each other's names and they come back uh, with a deeper connection. And as I said before, having the opportunity to work with some of the senior students as leaders um, really helps to make uh, the connection to the younger students and build that school community. The other thing that we try and do is uh, make connections to curriculum. So uh, one of the courses that is offered is a regional geography course, and we've been able to link that uh, to the grade 11 outdoor education trip to Vancouver Island uh, that our grade 11s partake in uh, generally, normally in the fall, uh, and uh, they go to Vancouver Island. And so students who are signed up for this course are able to actually integrate their coursework into the experience that they have when they are out uh, at West, which is a great, uh, a great connection to have. Um, the next slide will be our winter outdoor education program. Um, and again, this would be in sort of a typical year for us. Uh, we still build on the themes that we had in the fall. So for grade seven, building community, uh, grade eight, finding your authentic path, discovering personal strengths in grade nine, um, all the way up to um, our grade 12. And for this one, we're also looking at sort of building on the program, increasing skill development, increasing challenge, um, and looking for opportunities for our older students to gain leadership skills. Uh, so that is our outdoor education program. Very nice to chat with all of you tonight, and I will be available for any questions that you may have in the Q&A afterwards. I'm now going to uh, pass you over to learn a bit more about our service learning program. Thank you very much. Hello, everyone. My name is Rachel Brownell Swain, and I am the Director of Diversity, Equity, Inclusion, and Outreach. And I'm going to be talking to you a little bit around the outreach component of my portfolio, which encompasses the service learning program. I've been at the school since 2014. I've been the service learning coordinator since 2015. Uh, and I'm new to this directorship this year. Um, so as Tiara mentioned, and Julie also mentioned, you know, COVID had a huge impact on a lot of our outreach programming and, and the hands-on experiences that we were able to give our students. And the mission of the service learning program is really to provide students with an authentic and engaging opportunity to look at um, social justice, civic engagement, social change, community partnerships, all of these connections that allow students to really find their passion and find things that help to develop civic and moral character. Uh, so what does the program really look like? In grade seven and eight, students will be automatically placed in programming. Uh, and it could look like in person as we have done in, in the past. You know, we have Reading Buddies programs with two schools in Regent Park. Um, this year, of course, we've had to move away from the schools and our students this year have been exploring social justice, community building, community integration through a variety of activities, things like workshops, guest speakers, hands-on activities. Tomorrow we have a, a guest speaker coming to do a workshop at the School for Youth Homelessness. We've had students explore environmental activism by going out into the community and looking at you know, the area right around the school and what are some of the things that are needed right outside our front door, so to speak. Uh, and also exploring co-curricular opportunities within the grade seven and eight panel. So through their advisor program, looking at equity and diversity, looking at partnership school projects, uh, community gardens, book fairs, book drives, other outreach activities. And, you know, as Tara mentioned at the beginning here, we're slowly starting to build our program back up to what it has been in the past. And we're starting to see our kids getting out there into the world with a really deep understanding of what it means to be an ally, an activist, and to have civic character. For our high school program, we really partner closely with the student leadership, which you'll hear about in a moment. We want to give students age and stage appropriate opportunities to explore social issues, to work with community-based organizations, to actually be out in the community. And of course, as we're starting to build that up slowly, we are looking for those opportunities that allow our kids to get a lot of hands-on experience. We also like to give them opportunities to be leaders within the school. 
So when our programming is running at full capacity, you know, each of our individual external outreach programs will have a student leader. Right now we're looking for ways to have students within the school partner and um, create programming for our younger students. So we really want to look at where students are in terms of their own development and pair them and match that with opportunities within the service learning program. In grade nine, all of our grade nine students participate in the Youth and Philanthropy Initiative, which is a fantastic program that allows students to connect to a personal social justice issue that is meaningful to them uh, with real grant money on the line. So, you know, they explore the social justice issue, they look for community based organizations that are directly working in the realm of targeting these issues, and then they put together a presentation or a pitch to have grant money allocated to those organizations. Um, we are also looking at various ways to have our students start to reconnect with our community partners, be that with, um, you know, a sandwich making program for a shelter in Etobicoke, you know, we've worked with senior communities in the past, and we're really just trying right now to keep those partnerships alive and functioning in a, in a post-COVID kind of world and figure out ways that we can really get our students to engage deeply and meaningfully. You know, and students are asked to participate in these programs um, from grade nine to grade 12. We create a structure on a Wednesday morning through our timetable that allows them to explore these opportunities. Uh, they're, they're encouraged to embrace new opportunities. I love when kids come to me with an initiative, an idea, have you thought about this program? Could we do something in this space? And they really are encouraged through their advisor program and through the student leadership to, to take those risks and explore those new opportunities. We love a long lasting connection and you know we'll have students in the past who worked in grade seven and eight in our Regent Park community and they want to then go back in grade 9, 10, 11 and 12 to continue to see those connections that they've made. It's incredibly important that we are providing students not just with the knowledge and understanding of the community at large, but also with the tools in order to get out there and really be impactful. As again, as we open up the school, you know, the parent role in our service learning program is incredibly important. We have parent volunteers or we had parent volunteers in the school all the time. Um, you know, whether it be actually helping to supervise a program, participating in you know, a one-off initiative, but also just communicating and talking to your children about what it is that they are learning and experiencing. These are all ways that our parents have huge impact on the children's experience. So again, this is just a very small sampling of things that you know, our kids are able to participate in in grade seven and eight. Um, we partner with Spruce Court Public School in the Regent Park area. Our grade seven and eight students can support some of our school-based initiatives like our Out of the Cold campaign, which is around homelessness in the city, Inside Ride, which was a huge event that we did to support cancer research. We have holiday hampers, we have, you know, supply drives. We really want our, our youngest students and especially grade sevens and grade nines as they're new to the school to really start to understand what it is, the spirit of what we do at Greenwood. And then in grade nine through 12, you know, there are some examples of programming here. I mentioned the Youth Without Shelter. We have senior outreach programs. We have school-based tutoring programs. Trails is a program that's run through the Leacock Foundation and Hockey Heroes. So we really try to offer a breadth of interest um, but also recognizing that some of these programs, you know, can't house 30 students at a time. So we really want to give people an opportunity to get involved across the board. And finally, then we have some special programming as well. So, you know, Julie mentioned some of our winter OE in Typically, we have a challenge week with our graduating students where they get to stay in the city and have a more hands-on situated learning experience that deals directly with social issues. So we've partnered with Sistering in the past, the Salvation Army, we've worked with Sheena's Place. We work in organizations for the whole week where kids have a chance every day to be in the heart of some of these organizations and, and seeing in real time their impact and learning about these organizations as well. And as I mentioned, we do have a variety of community needs that are supported through fundraising or even awareness campaigns. Um, you know, sometimes we do like to highlight some issues that are, are personal to our community and it doesn't necessarily have to have a fundraising initiative attached to it. And I think that's 
that is my last slide. Yes, yeah, so I'm going to pass things over to Erin Porter. And as Julie said, I am more than happy to answer any questions during the Q&A. Thank you. Good evening, everyone. My name is Erin Porter, and I am the Director of Student Life at Greenwood. And I've got the honor tonight to talk to you a little bit about student life and student leadership at Greenwood. Um, I have, I would say, the best job in the school. I get to work with our student leaders um, to amplify student voice, to make positive changes within Greenwood school culture, and to empower students to execute initiatives and ideas that they have um, that they hope will better our community. So a little bit about me. I love Halloween. Um, you can see a picture of my family there. My partner is actually our coordinator of the arts. So if you're tuning in next week, you're going to hear from him. Um, and I've been at the school for 14 years now. This is my 15th year of teaching. Um, and I've done everything at Greenwood from teach careers in grade 10 to be a senior math teacher. And I'm currently in the guidance department um, and really enjoying the connection between my directorship role um, and my relationship role with students in guidance. So a little bit about our student leadership process to begin tonight. Um, very similar to our OE program and to our service learning program, the student leadership process takes a progressive approach that's age and stage appropriate um, for students as they work their ways through their years at Greenwood. And what I mean by that is when students apply to be on a leadership committee in some capacity, um, there will be certain expectations and roles and responsibilities given to them based on their years on the committee, their age, their academic course load, their other extracurriculars, and every student leadership committee has a staff advisor that supports the student leaders in their role. Um, one of our key pieces that we do uh, throughout the year is some grade 11 transition work. And so I did want to highlight our grade 11 leadership day today. Our grade 12s play a major role in terms of fostering community, a sense of belonging, inclusion within our school. When OE is up and running like it normally does, our grade 12s actually act as the camp counselors um, at Tamaqua and Kilku for the grade sevens, eights, and nines. They are also our executives of our leadership committees. And so they play a major part um, in contributing to Greenwood's positive school culture. And as such, we spend a great deal of time with them in their grade 11 year prepping them for their role um, in grade 12, as well as building cohesion within the grade 12 class as a whole. And so this grade 11 leadership day is a time for the entire grade to come together in June and culminate the work that we have done throughout the course of the school year as they really set their eyes towards creating a memorable graduating year, not only for themselves, but also for the community. And certainly that reciprocity is something that is fundamental to um, student leadership at Greenwood. Our house system is one of the most exciting parts, I think, of our Greenwood school culture. Um, similar to Harry Potter, similar to a lot of our other CIS uh, schools, we have a house system in which students in grades 7 to 12 are placed into a smaller community within the school to build intergrade relationships, to have some, some spirit, to have some competition, um, as well as to be with family members. If they have siblings or first cousins, at the school, they will all be placed in the same house to sort of have that, that legacy um, feeling. And certainly within our house system, it is a wonderful opportunity for students to come together across the grades and compete with one another and encourage one another and really just get to know one another. And probably the best part of it is when I see, you know, a grade eight student walking down the hall and they see a grade 11 from their house, they know them by name. They know, you know, what classes they're taking this year, if they're playing on a sports team and they can strike up a conversation with someone that is that's a few years ahead of them um, and it's just a really wonderful way to build connection within our community our house point system is based on our four pillars of character so intellectual performance moral and civic students can personally contribute to the house through the major events but also on a daily basis and again that's giving students really that feeling of ownership like they can make a difference at greenwood and certainly within the four pillars of character you could get intellectual character for diving deeply in an assignment maybe showing growth in a certain area within a classroom um, 
for performance character. It could be because you have a role in the play or you're playing on a sports team. Moral character happens in the quieter moments when teachers see students interacting with one another in class and outside of class. And civic character, as Rachel mentioned a moment ago, um, often is based on the service learning component. A couple of our key events um, that I just wanted to highlight tonight are our Terry Fox run in Halloween. We were so thrilled that we were able to return to an in-person Terry Fox this year and Halloween event with all the COVID protocols still being followed, but it was so wonderful to see students running with one another again um, to honor the Marathon of Hope. And then as well, Halloween is a big deal at Greenwood. People go all out. And certainly it was wonderful to see that that spirit has not been, uh, has not been killed off by COVID either. So these two events would be examples of performance and civic character. The spelling bee in our house reveals, the spelling bee is one of our major intellectual character um, events and certainly seeing 500 students in a gym captivated by other students spelling uh, is quite the sight and then our house reveals come every month where usually our house captains or our house executive team will reveal the top standings of the houses in some spectacular way. So this photo here is actually a chemical reaction where all the liquids came in clear and the captains filled them with different chemicals and then they changed color based on the standing. So like to infuse a little bit of magic into our school community. I want to transition now to talking a little bit about our student council. So our student council is another important avenue for student voice at Greenwood. They're not always the raw, raw front and center, but they are the students that are going out into each of their grade cohorts and talking to people and bringing ideas back and helping to discuss what the needs of the students are, whether it's academic, social, emotional, um, those sorts of things. And they organize our winter and spring spirit week. So here you can see during the spirit weeks, we have dress downs that are themed for each day. It's grade versus grade competition, which really helps to solidify some grade bonding. Our JCC, which is our Jewish Culture Club, put together, um, because it does happen in December, put together a Hanukkah pop-up for us during that week. And as well, you can see a number of other students from all grades competing in a escape room. So that's one of the, one of the pieces that our student council is responsible for. Our arts committee is also another one of our larger committees for student leadership. They run our arts everywhere activities. This morning they did a Play-Doh pop-up in the lodge and it's just a way to bring more visibility to the arts at Greenwood to give students a fun way to start their week that's relaxing and therapeutic and just sets a really nice tone on a Monday morning. Um, they also help to organize our Greenwood mics which are very similar to coffee houses and they support our junior and senior plays. Our DEI committee um, is also becoming one of our more visible committees at our school. Uh, they are constantly programming for building a more inclusive Greenwood and really the student voice um, and empowering student ideas is very present in this committee. So they are always bringing in guest speakers, workshops, student-led seminars, um, information pieces on our morning announcement broadcast, all around building a more inclusive Greenwood. And you can see there are a couple pieces that they they take care of specifically is our week of reconciliation, our pride week, our Holocaust education, Black History Month, Women's Week, just to name a few. And within the umbrella of the DEI committee are also our affinity groups. Our environment committee, also incredibly important in this time of climate change, um, are very popular at our school. They run our walk to school days. And, you know, there's nothing like leaving your house at, at I was going to say two in the morning, not two in the morning, at five in the morning from Etobicoke and walking three hours to school, all in the name of sustainability and all in the name of house points. So the environment committee collaborates a lot with our house system to get some notoriety and to bring that competitive feel. They also run our Meatless Monday program where the cafe works with them to actually create um, a vegetarian meal option for students on that day. Usually it's comfort food like mac and cheese and it's always very well received. Um, and as well here you can see them doing their sustainable gift wrapping for the holidays as another pop-up event. Finally, I wanted to highlight our Jack chapter. So another key um, pillar program 
which you will hear more about from our Director of Wellbeing in the coming weeks, um, is our JAC chapter. So our JAC chapter looks to reduce stigma around mental health as well as promote wellness and well-being at Greenwood. Um, and they do everything from bringing in therapy dogs to uh, Zumba classes, to cookie decorating, to take a bite out of stigma. They host pop-up Jack Talks for our grade seven and eight students. And again, this is all student-led, student-run, um, and they'll do Jack Talks around mental health and well-being, um, as well as talking about stress and anxiety and all of those different pieces that we know go into every student's day um, when they're in high school. So that's, that's our Jack chapter and another really key uh, group of student leaders at Greenwood. There is a wealth of student leadership opportunities, clubs and committees that I have not highlighted here tonight um, because we just do not have the time. So here are some others uh, that I just wanted to bring to your attention. And the other thing to note too similar to what Rachel said about when students have an idea and they bring that forward, we're going to work with them to execute that idea and to find support for them in that idea. And that's the same with our co-curricular clubs program. So every single year we have staples that run the tried, tested and true like DECA, which is our business club and SOMA, which is our model UN club. But on any given year, a student will bring forward an idea and we will work to find them a staff advisor and a space in which they can execute that idea. So for example, we just added last week a Women in Film Appreciation Club, um, which is being very well attended by a number of students in grade nine. And again, that was brought forward by a bunch of new grade nine students. They said, we, we're interested in this topic, maybe others are too. And we found a way to get that up and rolling for them. So certainly student voice um, and input is always welcome. And we do our best to accommodate. So I'm just going to turn it back to Tiara Hillis now to wrap us up. Amazing. Um, thank you, Julie, Rachel, and Aaron. I I know families um, continue to explore and engage in different opportunities as they, you know, go through the admissions process. And I'm always in awe of my colleagues and their um, just enthusiasm and passion for what they do in this building. So a big thank you for, for taking some time out of your evening to join us this evening. Um, Connor and, and I are now going to um, welcome and host a Q&A. Uh, with our panel, as mentioned earlier by Connor, we have a few students joining us and a few parent ambassadors as well. So we hope what you will do now is look below your live stream and see the uh, Google Meet link. It will take us a few minutes to, to, to all jump in there. So, you know, grab a, um, a quick beverage and um, we will see all of you or whoever um, is able to join us and an opportunity to pose some questions to our panelists and, as I said, students and, and parents. So see you momentarily. Um, we, um, again, Google link at the bottom of your live stream meet and, and give us a moment as we welcome everyone into that space for the live Q&A. Thanks, everyone.